In today's video, we're going to take a look at Writer AI. They are a full stack generative AI framework, which includes a group of proprietary models that have been trained by Writer themselves, a no code tool, and a low code app builder for building and deploying AI applications. And in today's video, we're going to focus more on the no code side. And in a separate video, I'm going to take a look at how to use the local tool, which is called framework, which gives you a drag and drop builder as its front end and a Python backend. All right. So to get started, you need to go to app.writer.com slash AI studio slash sign up uh, to sign up for an account. I'm just going to sign up here with my Google account. I'm going to drop the link in the description as well. All right. So let's go ahead and start creating creating our application. So there are multiple ways you can create your applications. You can start by going into templates and creating um, an application from the templates. We're going to just go ahead and try to create an application from scratch so that I can walk you through what's possible while uh, using this um, no code tool. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the build an app button. And here we can see that we have multiple options. There are two types of apps you can build within the writer platform. You can build sort of the no code tools and you can also use the developer tools. Now we're going to be looking at using the developer tools or the low code tool, uh, the framework along with the API in another video. But for this video, we're going to focus more on these two right here building a text generation app as well as a chat application. All right. So first and foremost, let's start with text generation and text generation just basically means that you're building an app that requires a set of inputs and, uh, and produces a pretty, pretty tight number of outputs as well. Right? So it's not conversational. It's not a chat bot, takes a few inputs and, and, and brings back, uh, some output. So for the idea of my application, I'm going to be building um, an SEO optimized blog generator. So this application just basically uh, generates SEO optimized blogs. Now within the configuration piece um, of any app builder on this end, you're going to have the inputs. Now you can add a number of inputs here. So you can add either a text input, drop down a file upload or an image input. Uh, for us, we just need two. So I'm going to just use uh, the first one I'm going to use is going to be um, a keyword idea. You can also make the field required. So you want to make sure that there's something here every time someone chooses it. So I'm going to do that. And basically we save it. So on the right hand side here, you can see that the preview of the app is coming up. So we see the keyword idea field has been added. Now I'm going to add the next one. So let's add uh, very, very quickly a drop down field. So let's say we want to call this field industry. So we want to create blogs that are really specific for specific industries. And now I can add some options here. All right, so we have all of our options ready to go. And all I need to do is make this required as well and hit the save button. Now the next option is the prompt. So I'm just going to use this one just for now. Now, if you want to modify some of your model configurations, they've also added some of, some of them here. So for instance, if you want to increase temperature, max length, top P and all of that stuff, and they also provide some presets which you can use. So if I because I'm kind of doing things that are creative, I can go with creative actually, and you know, save this. Now, the way they have structured this, you can add multiple prompts. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a few prompts here based on what we need. Uh, so the very first prompt that we want is that we want to generate a list of uh, long tail keywords um, based on an industry. So I'm just going to show you how to put it together within this application. So I say generate generate a list of and now to reference my input here all i need to do is to use the at button and it's going to give me access to the inputs and i can just use industry of industry so that's it that's all i need to do and and there there I have my first prompt and i can rename this prompt so i can add one new prompt at uh, this time around generate a list of three blog titles for the um for the for the industry of the industry, the title should be based on long tail keywords provided from the list below. So, and in the list below, I am going to say basically generate keywords based on whatever list comes back from this long tail keyword prompt. And to do that, I just simply need to do an at and I can reference the prompt. So this is the output coming from this prompt and I'm using it in my second prompt to generate a list of blog titles. My third prompt is going to be generate a list of blog sections for the blog titles from 
my blog title prompt. So I'm getting three blog titles and I want to pass it here. So once again, I can do the at and I can reference my blog title prompt. So you kind of get the, the, the gist here. You can reuse the outputs from each of the prompts in one another. And that makes for you to sort of almost think about it like chaining and lang chain, uh, where you can chain outputs um, from one another. So you, you can do that pretty easily here as well. And you can also duplicate um, each prompt. Now I'm going to add the final prompt, which is basically is for uh, the actual content. All right, so we have our final prompt here, which is basically generating the section content from each blog. All right, now the next thing um, you can do with your application is to have some output formatting. It actually takes in some HTML tags, H2 list of uh, long tail uh, keyword. And then the next thing you want to do is to say, okay, whatever output is coming from my long tail keyword prompt, I want to see it right here. So as you can see here, we have our first list output, which is sort of the list of long tail keywords, um, the blog titles, the sections and the section content. Now, finally, they have this configuration for voice. All right, to test out the application, we need to just enter an idea right here. So I'm just going to try the application here by talking about mountain bikes. And basically I'm going to, you know, do that in terms of retail and I'm going to go ahead and generate the text. Now what's going to happen behind the scenes here is that it's going to go through each of the prompts. It's going to generate the related output, and then you're going to see the output right underneath once it's done. So, and the final output looks like this. So based on what we already put together, the header with the lists, um, the blog titles, the blog sections, and the blog section content itself, which contains the blog title introduction uh, and each section with the content filled out. So in just a few minutes, we're able to just build out this application. Now we can go ahead and actually deploy this application just by hitting deploy. There are multiple ways you can deploy this. Now you can either make it available, maybe wait internally to folks via this playground link. So all you need to do is just set up playground and now you have your app available in playground. So in the playground basically just gives you access to the app. Um, you can also deploy this app as an embedded app. Um, so if you want to add it to a website um, as an iframe, uh, you can do that. So where in this case, it will be centered um, or you can add it as a widget as well um, in your application. And finally, you can also deploy this application to your writer library. All right, so let's just go ahead and build our expense bot. So I'm just going to go ahead uh, under no code and select chat application. And here we're going to have a few things. So first and foremost, you can basically provide a welcome message, which is provided whenever someone comes uh, into your app. Um, so I'm just going to paste something that I already written. It's just basically an expense bot, which helps quest answer questions about expense policy and things like that. You can add different chat options to your chats. You can see like the chat here. Um, you can add voice dictation so that someone can actually use their microphone. You can add a feedback flag so that when people ask questions um, or when their responses are provided, sorry, by the chatbot, they can rate them or provide feedback. And you can also add this ability to send to document as well. Um, and you can change the avatar and use any avatar. For now, we're just going to use the writer avatar. Now, with regards to chatbot applications and writer, there are three different modes, which you can use either one or a combination of them. But the general mode, this is just simply for ideating, almost like you're using ChatGPT, right? It's not really hooked onto any uh, specific data or connected to your own data. You're just basically you know, getting answers from the app proprietary model and you can select which model you want to interact with as well. All right. So and there's the, there's the knowledge graph mode. Uh, basically, this allows you to connect to what we call knowledge graph. And there's also the document mode, which is basically where you provide a bunch of documents and it's able to get answers from there. So let's go ahead and use the document mode for now. So that's the only mode we're going to use here. Um, and what we're going to do in the document mode is first and foremost, we want to add a set of instructions. Now, the cool thing is you can add multiple instructions. Uh, we're just going to use one instruction for now. So we're just going to go ahead and use this instruction. So add instruction. So as you can see, we have 
you know, our instructions added here. So we've just said basically you're HR consultant, you help employees understand company's expense policy. Now we're gonna go ahead and upload a policy document. Now, the cool thing here is that you can, you know, select from a list of different options, PDF, text, CSV, PowerPoint, doc, HTML, um, or XLX, XLS or XLSX. And we can go ahead and also kind of allow additional URLs too. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a file. I have my expense reimbursement policy document sample that I always use here. So this is basically, you know, the typical rack that you would expect when you're um, building any chatbot. So that's what they have right here. So, all right, so now we can ask our questions and see if this is working. So I'm just gonna ask a very quick question here. You know, what is the maximum I can get reimbursed for lunch and breakfast? First and foremost, it does uh, sub questions, um, which is pretty cool, which is like a self querying process where it does that first. So let's just go through it one second. So it, it analyzes the question, obviously does some kind of rag retrieval, uh, gets and then does some kind of sub question ask, asking, which is pretty cool as well. Okay, now that we're done with the preview, now we can just go ahead and deploy the application. To deploy the application, just go ahead and hit the deploy button. And once again, you can deploy as a playground app, you can deploy directly to writer. Um, or you can actually deploy this as a chat um, application or widget using iframe. So this, these are the ways you can actually go ahead and create these apps and deploy them pretty quickly. Um, as you can see, it really takes very, very little time to get this um, up and running. Thank you. And until next time, see you later.